Next, I'm going to talk about conditioning. Now, I've put a lot of comments in this section of the code so that it makes sense even if you're not listening to this audio, but I'm going to focus on the, the actual lines of code in here. First, recall that we can access a subset of a vector using hard brackets. For example, if remember if vec1 is equal to 2, 4, 5, 6, if I say vec1 hard bracket 1, that gives me back the first element of vec1. So hard brackets are always going to mean the word where, w-h-e-r-e, and you'll get a subset. Another way to get a subset of a vector is instead of specifying in the hard brackets the number of the element you want, putting a vector of trues and falses. So this line says vec1 where true, false, false, false. And if I run this, I'm still going to get the first element of vec1 because what these trues and falses do is they tell me whether this subset should include the first element of vec1, whether the subset should include the second element, etc. True, false, false, false. And we got back just the two, which is the only one that was true. Why would that ever be useful? Well, because instead of putting a vector of explicit trues and falses inside the hard brackets, we can put something that simplifies to a vector of trues and falses. So for example, I'm going to highlight just this inner part here, vec1 equals equals vec2. Let me run that code. It happens that based on how vec1 and vec2 were specified, the expression vec1 equals equals vec2 simplifies to true, false, false, false. So then, if I say vec1 where vec1 equals equals vec2, if I run that, again, I'm going to just get back the first element of vec1. I'm going to get back the element of vec1 that corresponds to the word true. Now, if, if this had been true, true, false, false, I would have gotten back the first two elements of vec1, etc. Again, why is any of this useful? Because we can replace these vectors by, by variables. So, for example, this line I've highlighted here is from the Swiss data set, which is built into R. This says, I want the fertility variable from the Swiss data set where the agriculture variable from the Swiss data set is greater than 50. The inner part, Swiss agriculture greater than 50, simplifies to a bunch of trues and falses. The trues are only where agriculture is greater than 50, and those are the only um, elements of fertility I'm going to get back. So if I do this, R has just printed out a bunch of numbers. Here are the fertility numbers for the rows in the data set where agriculture was greater than 50. I could also give a name to this subset. So if I run this, this line of code, nothing's printed out, but now um, this vector of numbers right here is, has been named fertility subset. You can also summarize that subset either by writing summary around the command itself or I'm um, saying summary of the name you gave it. Those are the same thing. And if I do the summary, this is a continuous variable. I'll get a mean, a median, etc. And you can do um, more sophisticated things. Maybe I want to summarize fertility where either agriculture is greater than 50 or Catholic is greater than 50. Right? And I can do that and get a summary as well. So now what we have is a way to create subsets of variables based on the values of other variables in the same data set, which is really nice. This works for matrices as well. Remember, though, from, to, to specify a subset of a matrix, you have to not only say which rows you want, but also which columns you want. So anything we've said here about putting a vector in the hard brackets, now we have to do that before the comma for the rows and after the comma for the columns. So here I say, give me the Swiss data set where, for the rows, I want the rows where agriculture is greater than 50, and for the columns, I left this blank, so it'll give me all the columns. But I need that comma there, so I know I want all the columns. And I'm going to name this subset Swiss subset. It's the subset of the Swiss data set where agriculture is greater than 50. And I wonder how many rows that is. How many did I get? Looks like there's 26 rows and 6 columns in this subset of the data. So now when you want to create a subset of any data set, we have a way to do that based on the values of the variables themselves.